<sighs> All right, this is Clint from the doorway too, hanging out with a couple of members of. Is it Pyrite Ship? Is that how you say it? I, I, or is it Pirate Ship? Like, h- how do you say the band name? Pyre. Pyre Ship. All right. Yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, I got three of the members here hanging out with me. I don't care who starts first. Kind of say your name and what you do in the band. Ladies first. <laughs> Hi. Um, my name's Jenny Jordan, and I sing with the band. Um not very musically talented as far as instruments go, but um, I'm honored to sing with these guys. Yeah. George, George, you want to go next? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, I'm George. I play bass and uh, haul the heavy things for the band. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, and I'm Crew. I play guitar and sing most of the clean male vocals. Um, I do, on the new album, I do some of the shouting on, uh, on actually, I shout on most of the tracks, but like a secondary to Sam. And then, uh, yeah, that's about it. Most of the cool. clean, clean, emotional singing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, so there's a lot to unpack with this band. So uh, there's a couple of things that I kind of want to talk about. Uh, So there are three distinct genres of music that come from listening to the new record, Light, and listening to the last full-length record. Um, And what I get is I get post-metal, I get some sludge, and I get a whole lot of shoegaze. And I, I, I'm just going to let you know, like, I hear a ton, yeah, I hear a ton of it, man. <laughs> and I'm a huge fan of that style of music. So when those guitars and those kind of tones mm. come out, that's what really kind of like, I've not heard too many kind of doomy sludge bands that are fuzzed out, add that kind of stoner kind of uh, shoegaze kind of vibe to it, which is very cool. Yeah. Uh, hey. Yeah. It, it's basically... Uh, that's my background. Uh, I haven't always played my first, my first band when I was in high school was metal and cause I was metal and punk, but I've always, my parents were musicians. So I've always had a super eclectic, you know, uh, musical taste, I guess. And, and, uh, I just fell in love with that in the nineties, you know, and that's, I was always into like just that atmospheric like just soundscapes and tones and you know telling a story with just some over-the-top sounds and stuff so you know but it wasn't until um i mean i played in some some heavier bands but this is definitely the heaviest for me yeah and sam's uh sam's got a lot of influence in that as well because he's super into ambient music and stuff like that and uh i never really got into a lot of that but uh i think some of the sludge and doom is probably me to a a degree (laughs) because i just like a really heavy sludgy slow impactful bass sound and so that's kind of what i tend to default to well, of course, it's the bass guy bringing the sludge mm-hmm. in. Come on, that makes complete and utter sense. Yeah. Uh, from one fellow bass player to another, yeah, the <laughs> lower, the slower, the better. You get to get heard then. It's nice, man. Yeah. Uh, but uh, cool. So there's a couple of bands. So uh, I have been, I know it's not a politically correct term, but I've been <clears> pimping <throat> you out to my friends like no tomorrow. Uh, like Thank you got to listen to this. Yeah, yes, you got to listen you. to this. You, you got to listen to this band because it's they're doing something really different. But there's three particular bands I kind of lump together and say, if you like this, this and this, you need to check out this band. And the first one is going to be a no brainer. Uh, but Colta Luna was the first one I kind of said, because you have that kind of post metal Colta Luna vibe. But the other two, I think, I don't know if you're going to know or not, like, as well as the, that you feel like it's influences. So the, the second one now, uh, crew, you're probably going to be that you're, uh, you know, a, a shoegaze kind of guy. But uh, I feel there's a ton of slow dive going on in your music, mm-hmm. a ton of slow dive. For Sam, as, too. He's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially for the tonality of the guitars. Right. Uh, and, and then the last mm-hmm. band, uh, they're they're not a really known band, but they're one of my favorites. They're called Rodan. Um, and, uh, so if you like, like Slint and things like that, 
That's where they come. Huge slant fan. So you need to listen to Rodan. They did two records and and, and literally broke up. They did a a full length record and a live record on the BBC. Mm. And uh, they were, they just, they mix metal and post rock for the very first time. Like it's just, it's a, it's amazing. So, but Mm. I tell people, listen to those three bands. If you like that, there's no way you cannot listen to this group. Um, But uh, I I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that. Now, I'm going to jump into the guitars for a bit right now, and then we can talk about the other parts of the music. But uh, being a guitar player, bass player, and singer, like uh, the guitars are always something, and bass are always something that like draw me to bands. Um, so I want to kind of talk about this record versus your first full length that came out like all the way back in 2017, uh, The Liars, that uh, Liars Ben Low. Uh, so I, I, the, the guitar tones that I hear on this one are much darker and atmospheric than on yeah. the, the first record. So yeah. can you kind of talk a bit about that? Sure, sure. So the, the first record, we actually had a third guitar player. Um, so um, it uh, we we actually went through a myriad of different configurations when we were getting started. So um, this will give you a little background. I met Sam through a Craigslist deal of buying gear. <laughs> and then... I saw he was wearing an ISIS hoodie. Nice. And I was like, this is my people, you know, like, hey. And then uh and then you know whatever, I bought I bought a couple cabs off of him. Two I think I bought three cabs off of him. Came home, two weeks later he calls me, "Hey, you want to jam?" I show up and a dude I've known my whole life is sitting in behind the drum set, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it was kind of cool. Um but uh but yeah, I mean as far as uh, the first record, sorry about that. As, as far as the first record, we were. I, I don't know how to how to well, make, put this in words. The we, first we, the first record actually, like we went into the studio to cut a demo, like right. it, it wasn't even gonna try and turn it into an actual album. But once we started recording, we were like, "This sounds pretty good." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. And then, uh, you know, the rest is history. Um, I I mean, uh, John from Conan got involved in it, you know, like, uh, you know, just through networking and playing shows and stuff. And he was like, yeah, uh, this, you know, you're not I sent I think I sent it to him because he was at because we were setting up a show or something. We had recorded it. I sent it to him. He's like, are you all putting this out? I was like, dude, this is just a demo. And he was like, uh, no, let's let's put this record out. And I was like, OK, I mean, we were all super stoked, obviously, you know. And uh, but as far as the sound of the guitars on the first record, we were using more um, like high gain type stuff. Yeah. yeah so so I was using a, a two two different science amps. Um, one called the mother and the other one. I can't remember what it was. I ordered them both from Alex over at science and. Can't even remember what the decolonizer was the other one. And then um, uh, I also used a, a Dunwich in there. Mm. Uh, Sam Sam pretty much exclusively uses SLOs. So um, uh, he did use uh, a couple of like non-master volume style amps to layer on that first record, but we probably used about 10 different amps on that first one. I may not sound like it, but um, I think what we ended up doing is whatever sounded best for the songs were the tracks that we kept. So, um, so there was we and we we really just came in, put those songs together with no expectations. You know, we threw down all the guitar stuff we could we could do because we, we didn't know it was going to sound good. We were still really new, <laughs> you know. We as far as a group of guys playing together. And I mean, uh, so, you know, once obviously over time, we kind of developed our our thing, you know, Uh, I don't think that the album is the first album tells a different story or shows a different partnership, but more so like a progression of how we slid in on like on the second record. We kind of knew what we 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 kind of had a few years to bond you know, uh, get to know each other uh, a lot and, you know, travel together and, you know, whatever. 
and we, we really started to kind of write on a different level, like more yeah. deliberate is what how I feel it was. Well, you also, know, so, yeah, also the, the second album, the first one, we basically rewrote everything and then we rushed in to record it. And it turned out way better than we thought it would, so we ran with it. But the second album, uh, we wrote everything, and then we basically played everything live for almost a year, mm -hmm. really just kind of refining everything. And the way we'd play our sets is we'd do every single song went into each other. We might do some like noise-type transitions, but basically played it like it would be a single piece of music almost like an album and that way when we went in to do the live recording of it it just easy yeah yeah, yeah. I, I was I, I was gonna say that th there's not a lot of difference between the two records but tonally that's kind of where the the, the, the the difference right is. yeah so like the new the new one i went away from using a humbucker uh because i wanted uh you know even within the distortion, I wanted a level of piano-like clarity. Mm. So I didn't want it to be a mash of, of, of uh, just crunch, you know. I wanted it to be like a super – I use a non-master amp. So I just crank that mother up, and I, <laughs> and I have a, a single, single yeah. coil in my guitar that I use. And, like, and, and it, it's just the sound I've been looking for. You know, cool. I've never stuck with a guitar rig this long. You can ask any George or Jenny or anybody. It's true. I've never had a guitar rig this long, and I, I've I've had the same rig for five years now. Like cool. it's nuts, you know. Cool. So, so I mean, and and that just reflects on, on uh, really, well, just everything. The this the way we felt about the way the world is changing, you know, everything like just led to this sound that we kind of found as a group. And, uh, and uh, we couldn't be more happy, but it may change. You never cool. know. <laughs> no, no, I got you. So, so George, I want to talk about your bass playing, especially on the new record, particularly. Yeah. Uh, so you and your drummer are so in the pocket on this record. Like it is mm, thank like, you. It, it, no, but that's not typical for like sludge and doom. A lot of times it's meandering in the background, kind of adding a heaviness where like, you know, the, the quiet spots to be able to hit the heavy parts. And when they're not needed, you just play the bass, like in this warm kind of tone. Yeah. So uh, when, when you start working on this together, do you have a groove set for it? Or is it just kind of, let's go in a studio play live? Like, you know, uh, usually I kind of let, Steve start feeling out the drum parts and I just react to what he comes up with because Steve's got a lot of like influences in like stuff like Michigan and nice. Sepultura and stuff like, and I, me too. So we both like, I love stuff like, and even neurosis where it's just tons of toms and just, you know, like uh, just brutal, like, driving pounding bass and drums and that's my thing like i don't i don't like to play like a very mathy style yeah i just i don't want to i don't want to treat my bass like a scalpel or a knife i want to treat it like a baseball bat and i want to swing it in your face <laughs> you, you know go. and um so that's my thing is i just i want to create impact because the guitars tend to wander so much and do their own thing a lot so to me all i've got to do is just anchor to steve and just drive just drive cool. the song create yeah. a basic melody here and there cool uh yeah through silver and blood is one of my favorite records mm -hmm. of all time yeah. so i totally know where you're going with that um and last but not least jenny i have not forgotten yeah. about you That's in any okay. way shape or form. so i have a couple of questions for you um because I think I'm really confused, but are you on the first record? I'm not on the first record. I didn't actually. think so. I was the merch. I was the merch goddess, uh, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, so she, I, she, I sold she, all the merch for the first record. Well, in the second one as well. But well, and yeah. she's kind of like our den mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah she I try to keep the them business. out of control too. Like, like they get a little crazy, especially Steve. You know, yeah. so 
Cool. So yeah, I, I was I was looking hard and trying to hear, and I was no. like, I don't, I don't I don't hear her anywhere on this record. Well, no, so we traded Alex for her. Yeah, <laughs> he lives in North Carolina now. So cool, cool. Yeah, it's kind of a natural. Yeah, so I'll, we are already writing and uh, working on the next one. So I will be more present on the <sighs> next re- record. So I'm I'm pretty excited. We also you know I have small children, so it was really hard for me to always be at the practices and such. So gotcha. Yeah. Um, so. so, so what do you add on this new record? Like if, if for people that are going to hear it for the first time, what would you say makes this band different with you than without you? Um, I maybe bring a little bit of softer side. <laughs> um, these guys are, are really like, um, little softies at the end of the day. They, they got a softer side. So maybe I kind of bring that out as well. Um, and and maybe you know it's kind of frustrating when you go to a metal show or a rock show and there's not a lot of chicks there, you know. So it's kind of nice to to meet another chick at a show and hear someone say, "I'm so glad there's another girl here," you know. Yeah. So hopefully that'll maybe appeal to more girls to come out to a good show, even if it's you know not necessarily a cup of tea. You can always find something that you can take out of it and you know love. So, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I, the, the, three of my signed bands all had female members in it, and I never thought of it any different than just a, a band member. A matter of yeah. fact, I, prob- I probably got into more pissing matches with the female members <laughs> in my band than the man, male members of my band. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what? You know what you want, and that's what matters. So I kind of wanted to say, like, there's a couple of bands that I'm going to pinpoint that kind of I feel like you add that touch to it. I don't know if you like them. I don't know if you hate them. I don't know if I'm way off in third base over here. Uh, but uh, one of them for very much uh, is Gracion. I don't know if you know who they are at all. Uh, so her name's Jackie. She's also in a band called Umber Asylum. And she's also in another band called Giant Squid. Uh, her voice and your voice are very similar in this kind oh, cool. of like hypnotic. Oh, yeah, this hypnotic kind of vibe. And then the other band that I really kind of want to talk about is Jesus and Mary Jane. And the reason yeah. why I say Jesus and Mary I know Jane I've is heard that. Yeah. Yeah, because your voice sounds just like his at certain points in time when you're very breathy and laid back. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I don't think you take the heavy out. I think you add the atmosphere to the heavy. Like yeah. that's kind of like the best yeah. way I can explain mm-hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um so I'm, I'm going to jump into a kind of a little bit about the the record and the songs I like and things like that, because I feel like, so I've, I listened to the first record a couple of times and nothing really caught me as much as the second record. And I think it's just because of like, we talked about the tonality of the new record. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so I want to talk about the second record a little bit more. Well, your second full length. I know you had like a split, uh, but uh so I'm going to be straight out. Why the hell did you wait three years to make it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't. <laughs> we, we waited three years to release a record. I mean, okay. like I said, uh, once we recorded the first record, we just started writing new stuff. And then we basically, like I said, we kind of played it and worked it out live for about a year. And then we recorded it. But then basically, as soon as we had it all mixed and mastered, lockdown. And so we were like, man, if we send this off to get it printed on vinyl, are we going to be sitting Mm -hmm. here with hundreds of copies of vinyl? Like, are we going to release it? Nobody's going to listen to it. You know, there's just so much uncertainty because usually, you know, you make an album, you release it, you get some vinyl, get some CDs, you go out, you play it, you know, you do the normal band thing. But all of a sudden that screeched to a halt and went away. Mm -hmm. So... It made us just. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, we were done tracking it in mid 2018. Oh, wow. So, and then we, it wasn't until um, right before the lockdown or right when the lockdown happened in 2020 that we, we were like, well, I'm kind of tired of sitting on this. Let's at least send it to get mixed and mastered. And then mm-hmm. at least we'll know, you know, when the time is right, when it when it comes about, you know. And it just never felt like the right time. Like everyone was doing 
uh, you know, video shows and yeah. re- re- every, everyone got into a habit of just recording and releasing so- singles song by song, you know, like people were just putting out songs instead of old records. I mean, people put out records, obviously, but yeah. it just it just felt like to me like total chaos. And I was just like, with everything that's going on, this just doesn't feel right to to uh, to put out because not because it wouldn't help people through the situation that the country was in or the world was in. Um, but it was more like, at least from my, my viewpoint, it was more like, you know, uh, we really had a, I don't know, a, a, maybe a certain expectation of how it was received that we wanted uh, things to be a little less chaotic when it when we did put it into the world, you know, and it, it was a hard decision to make. You know, we got we got, you know, frustrated with each other and we got frustrated with the situation and, you know, this what are we doing? You know, we practiced like three times in two years mm-hmm. and it, it, it was like uh, at the time I we weren't really set up to do to do what we are actually doing now is like demo songs and send it around to each so we can work on it at home. We weren't doing that. We were, you know, our previously we were all getting together and writing together as a whole, which is why I think the album came off, uh, really cohesive as a, as a singular idea, you know, and, um, and, and it's right for that record. It may not be something that we stick to, um, just because, uh, you know, how, how life is now, but, um, but I don't know those, you know, that's how I, how I viewed the, the waiting so long. It, it wasn't a, it wasn't a choice. Uh, you know, it wasn't like we didn't want to, we just didn't think the time was right. So. Gotcha. Cool. So uh, the thing I really love about the, the record again is, and you kind of just talked about it a bit is it feels like a story. Like mm. if you, if, if you don't listen to the song album throughout fully, I feel like you're missing pieces of the puzzle. Like if mm-hmm. you jump tracks, you're not going to get the full picture of the band. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I really love is you allow the songs to breathe. And a lot of bands don't do that today. Like everything's got to be three minutes in a compartmental package. <laughs> and like, you know, like, and I, I hate that. Like mm-hmm. uh, songs under five minutes just seem so disposable to me. Like that's just right. kind of like, it doesn't give you enough time to be at a layer. So as you were making the new record, did you purposefully kind of arrange the songs in the order that they were, or did they just happen naturally? Um, the, that's a, that's a difficult question. All right. Now this is going to sound weird, okay? but the last song on, on this current record, we actually recorded for the first one, mm. but it, but it didn't fit. Okay. We have, and, and the version that we had during the first recording, I went back and listened to it, uh, a while back. It just, it, we sound checked with it in the studio in the first session and I, it, we didn't have it quite there and we knew it. So we kind of discarded it. That sounds uh, very different now. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it like where it was, where it was in that first session to the second session is a different uh is is a different story because we had already started tinkering with the ideas of the second record when we were in the studio with the first gotcha you know so um but as far as the idea like we kind of had a general theme because george and sam and sorry if i'm speaking for you or too much but uh but uh we're real into those the uh, the Gene Wolf books when we were yeah. writing this I second was record. Say. <laughs> yeah, that, like and I Shadow started, of the Torturer. Yeah, so or the Torturer's yeah, Apprentice. Yeah, so they were reading them. So I jumped in on it, and uh, I read the first first one. And it's they're so dense. The books oh, are so dense. Yeah. I had to like reread it. It's you know, the, more than once. <laughs> it's the densest, most hardcore sci-fi book yeah. you will ever read. <laughs> yeah. So we were all in that mindset, and uh, you mentioned this before. Then Mariner came out by Cult of Luna with Julie Christmas, and it just kind of all tied together and. 
And not necessarily like we were trying to emulate that or copy that. It was just, it was a headspace that we were all in yeah. together. Like, well, and we yeah. we kind of felt like there was a missing element, um, especially with the vocals. And it, Jenny had played in a band before with Crew, so you know it was just kind of like. We we tried out actually a few mm-hmm. uh, female vocalists over the years, and nothing really felt remotely close to right. And then when we were ready to really try and hammer down the vocals, we were like, "It's kind of a no brainer." Use Jenny. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 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 you you took the thunder from me for a moment just now, <laughs> and I think I think it's funny because <laughs> the next thing I was going to talk about is Jenny's vocal style is very made out of babies to me like uh, that, like so when you said the julie christmas thing like i was like yeah damn it he just took it from me before <laughs> yeah. i could even say it so that mariner record yeah i can totally hear the vibe uh because jenny when you do get aggressive that's you like you Aww. are very, you are very julie like uh well thank now, you now yeah like that Huge that's kind compliment. of you yeah. should have seen when she met Julie. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it was I like, got girl. I got super super fan girl. I was just like, uh, and he goes, That's "Can awesome. she take a picture with you?" <laughs> like, I don't know what to do with my hands. She's the yeah. sweetest girl She's in the so, world. Like, yeah. are you kidding? Like, I used to live in New York, so I know her a bit. So I'm just like, yeah, like, she's yeah. pretty awesome. She's like she's the sweetest awesome. girl. Like, yeah, she's menacing on stage, but like in person, awesome. Like, yeah, no, totally cool. The other thing I was gonna say was you remind me a lot of this band Low uh, when uh-huh. you do like the cleaner parts. Yeah, low. but vocally and guitar wise, yeah, especially like earlier period Low, not so much the poppy poppy right, low. Right. So you, you know what I mean. So the reason that I ever started playing aluminum, uh, aluminum neck guitars <laughs> was because of him. So he had a Kramer aluminum neck guitar when I saw them in like ninety something, and uh, they were. Uh, what is the? It's the album cover that has like a red velvet. Um, yeah. And just a snare on the cover, I think. Yeah. Uh, it was the, it was that tour. I can't remember the name of it now, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I you don't even understand the obsession I have with that band in particular and like how they, st- you know, I still play aluminum net guitars, you know, and I have. Since when that- I saw them and there was just two people doing that, I was uh, utterly blown away. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing band. Cool. Cool. Um, so I, there's two songs in particular on this new record that I want to talk about. And uh, I am going to talk to Jenny first about this because the first song is Anathema. Uh, And uh, I feel like these two songs are the two sides of your band. So Anathema reminds me of everything great about heavy post rock, like everything great about it, like right before it becomes metal. Like, I almost would say if Russian circles had a vocalist, <laughs> they would record Anathema, okay? Uh, <laughs> like, that's kind of the vibe. I'll that take I, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, because to me, Russian circles aren't a metal band, but they get tagged so yeah. often yeah. as a yeah. metal band. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, Jenny, you're, uh, now, your vocals at, at times are almost angelic, okay? And, and then at other times... They are the fiercest, most terrifying things that I, I, I feel like are, are happening, even though they may not be the most brutal. But when you guys were recording these songs, was there something special about Anathema when you made it? You want to tell them what it's about, Jay? Uh, I'll let her answer and then I'll okay. talk about what it's about. <laughs> it's it's wild. Well, I don't know. I think you need to just talk about it because, I mean, a little okay. preface. All right. <laughs> All right, so so um, this was a song that I wrote separate from Pyre Ship, and I wasn't ever even sure that I was going to bring it to the practice space, which we don't do very often. We usually work as a unit because mm-hmm. it comes across better that way. Um, but this particular song... Uh, is a super um, emotional and uh, draining and terrifying song for me. So the song is actually about, um, uh, in short, my roommate 
got tweaked out on meth, killed his girlfriend, chopped her up, and burnt her in the fireplace. And that's what that song is about, experiencing, like, because this guy is was the sweetest, give the shirt off your back, like, I mean, just like a a super great guy, you know? I'd known him for a long time. Uh, we had lived together on, you know, several occasions. Um, I got really busy with working in the oil field, and we kind of lost touch. Um, and, like, right after, you know, not long after, I I see him on the news, and I'm just like, what on earth? So this song was written as a reflection of of that situation, like of me, like of me. It's really it really captures um, my reaction of when I saw that news story mm-hmm. and like everything that ran through my head at that moment. And that's like in a nutshell what that song is. So at having you know, been in bands with, with Jenny and she's usually around when I write, you know, everything like she had heard this song way before the boys had heard it, Mm -hmm. you know, so she already had a connection to it, you know? And, uh, so lyrically we didn't have it fleshed out, but I, I, you know, I was like, this is what, where this song came from, you know, you remember, you know, this guy and blah, 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 and blah. So, um, yeah. So, it's that song that and it's very unique uh to the record and and very uh special to me in particular so um but and i yeah. think when he brought it in he kind of told us all the story and as it's probably normal we were all pretty much like holy shit. <laughs> you know and So we all treated the song with a lot of respect because, you know, it's, I mean, it's a song, but it's rooted to some really deep experiences and feelings for Jason. So, I mean, taking it lightly and half-assing it, just not appropriate. No, So, yeah. So, Jenny, talk about the song a bit. Um, Well, you know, the the song, because I got to see, I guess, you know, the writing of it and um, Jason's experience of just kind of processing all the the hurt and sadness and, I mean, some anger. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's such an emotional song for all of us. Um, I, I would say because of some of our histories with drugs and alcohol and substance abuse, um, it made it even deeper of... Uh, it was painful, just painful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think it was expressed pretty well um, on the recording, just the emotion that's behind it. Um, you know, addiction's hard and drugs are bad, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> okay. absolutely. And, and that's why I was saying, like, it, it's it's powerful, it's yeah. painful, it's emotional all and at the same time. It's dark and, yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, there's... Oh gosh, it's just—it's a lot. It, it's very gotcha. full. It's very full. Don't don't listen to that song and then go listen to a Slint album. Don't do that because <laughs> <laughs> that progression is very the the very first progression is very. I, after I wrote it, I was like, man, that really sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did I rip that? I didn't rip it off. You, it's just you, you <laughs> didn't rip it off. It is, it is similar. I was yeah. I was going to have a couple yeah. conversations with you about that, too. But yeah, that's yeah. cool. Um, so the other song, which I think encapsulates the. Total ideal of your band. Uh, from the ferocity and the atmosphere is Forest of Spears. Um, and I literally think it may have one of the greatest guitar and bass tones that I've heard in quite some time. Um, you. your drummer's phenomenal. Don't get me wrong, but he's not here. So we're not talking about it. <laughs> right, um, right, right. But, uh, but, uh, yeah. You want to know uh, another, a funny story about that song is, um, I was, we were, we were rehearsing one of the other songs on the album at the time. And I got really frustrated with it because I couldn't get across what I was 
like it just shit just wasn't working for me that day. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I was just generally in a pissed off shitty mood or what. So I just fucking grabbed a guitar and started playing those riffs. I had never played those riffs before. I'd never, I had never done anything. They rushed into the room and we got that song done in like 15 minutes. Wow. And it was, yeah. it was, it was, it was born out of our frustration in our writing sessions. Yeah. So <laughs> it was pretty cool. You know? That one, yeah, that one clicked just really quick and easy. Mm-hmm. I'm cool. sure every band has something like that, you know? So, yeah, so I, I was going to say, and, and I like referencing bands so people can have an idea that haven't heard your band yet. So uh, I was sitting there listening to it, uh, actually uh, chatting, video chatting with my, one of my friends because I just moved from Arizona to Florida. So I am now 2,000 miles the other way of life right. that has been that for 10 years for me. I went to and high school a, in Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, I lived in North Phoenix uh, for the, like the last 12 years. So Right on. Uh, I, went, I went to uh, Goldwater in Deer yeah. Valley. That's where I lived. I lived. Oh, right. I, I, I literally lived right over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's so, dude. Uh, the ongoing joke with us is that Jason <laughs> knows everyone, or is connected to everyone. He's like somehow. Forrest Gump. Of- <laughs> That's like funny. You man. joke around. You're like, yeah. If you ever need Tiger, just let Jay know. And he laughed. And then he thought for a sec. He's like, actually, I do know a guy that sells tigers. <laughs> wow. Of course you do. Cool. Cool. Uh, so I was going to, so we were, he's like, what are you listening to? And, and of course I said, you guys. And he goes, and, and I think this encapsulates it perfectly. He goes, it sounds like Swerve Driver just became a death metal band. And I was <laughs> like, I was like, he's like, he's like, what is all that? Like that? And I'm like, man, you win. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything else. So he literally tagged it as a death metal swerve driver. So just so you know, like Uh, that is like, that makes me smile so much because that's another band that I absolutely love. Yeah. Um, Same, same. Absolutely. And, and he, he hit the nail on the head really with that. I I couldn't agree with him more. (laughs) Well, like, uh, for me, when I was trying to figure out some of the parts of that song, I kind of, fell back on uh failure has always been a huge band for me mm-hmm. and uh especially like heliotropic that whole album yeah. um so like i just started playing with uh playing some chords just with a really heavy distortion just to kind of really flesh out some of those parts and yeah but i mean i've always yeah. I Just think you. without the, without that style of yours, George, I don't think that song works the same way. Like it, it I, the the stuff that you do on that song just make it what yeah. it is. That's why I, I said the guitar and the bass are kind of like integral in that. Mm-hmm. Get Jenny. Mm-hmm. What you were going to say <laughs> something? No, oh. I was agreeing. <laughs> oh, 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 cool. Um, but yeah, so George, like you were saying, I feel like Failure is this gateway band for so many people. <laughs> like, it's so funny. Yeah. Like, so many people get into heavy music from Failure. It's like, it's ridiculous to me. Like, well, I mean, uh, the, bass, the bass sounds that they yeah. have on so many other albums are just unreal. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk about where you're from a bit. So the Houston area. Uh, so... There's one band that I have loved forever uh, and never got the respect or praise. And I feel like Houston in general is like the bastard child of all of Texas. <laughs> like, totally. it's like, yeah, it's Absolutely. like Austin, Dallas, San Antonio mm-hmm. all get love. And there's so many amazing bands from Houston that just like get to a certain point and then they never break into the next level. Um yeah. But there's one in particular I want to talk about, and I'm sure you know them because they're goddamn legends. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's Dead Horse. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. All right. I've so, been listening to them since I've been playing. So, 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 <laughs> Pretty Flowers and Peaceful Death is probably one of my favorite goddamn records of all mm-hmm. time, just right. because they do very much what you do in a very different way. They mix punk, thrash, and kind of death metal together, where you add the shoegazing and atmosphere into the into the right. metal kind of world. Um, but do you feel like Houston as a whole, like, because it's kind of the forgotten child, does it add, do, do you guys have a special sound there? I mean, Houston's one of the largest cities in the country. There's so many bands. 
and so many good bands that, so many no, good one's bands. Ever, that no one's yeah. ever heard and and it's also a really diverse city like uh my sister's just down here visiting from new york and like i took her for vietnamese food indian food south african you know we have everything here it's a super diverse city so it's just a melting pot of everything including music and it's just none of us can put our finger on why <laughs> <laughs> everyone just sleeps on Houston but I mean we're starting to see a few bands break out like the mm-hmm. Suffers and um, they've gotten pretty big and, um, and Oceans like, of Slumber yeah um, yeah, yeah. So. And, and like Night Night Cobra and yeah. Necrofire yeah. and like I mean and, and bands like uh, American Sharks, they're from here, yeah. but they did move to Austin. Mike yeah. is one of my best friends in the world from American Sharks. We've done, we've done music together for 20 years. And I mean, it, the only, and, and that's a testament to what you're saying. Like, they had to leave here to find the success that they finally got. You know, they they actually were stationed in Houston with a different, my old, my drummer that I played with in the 90s, they had him, but uh, his name was Buck. Now they have Nick. Um, but uh, and Kyle is in the band now from the sword. So um, anyway, um, they were here for almost five years and nobody they couldn't get anything going. They moved to Austin. They signed to uh, yeah. what Danzig's label. What is that? Called? What is that label called? I can't remember. Evil in or whatever. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and then, and then the rest is history. And now he's a, an engineer and producer in Austin and he's still yeah. doing American Sharks. He just released wow. a a country album you know but and it's i mean it's just like you kind of gotta i don't know why we can't get it done here because i just i feel like there's not a lot of support for bands that are doing original music here in houston i mean it's it's the the people that i encounter are going to these Mm. cover band shows at you know little hold them all yeah tribute Mm -hmm. bands it's it's just like it's That's not, a big you, thing here. You go to yeah. Austin. You go to Austin, and there's a thousand bars that you can pop into and and see somebody new and fall in love. But here, yeah. it, it's it's just it, we're so spread out too. One there's, of the venues, it's, it's a, just not convenient for. There's a, there's a lot of pay to play. Yeah. Um, especially on some of the outer edges of the city. Yeah. And then, like everywhere that has a stage, like in a bar. If it's not a like real music venue that's putting together shows, they just default to cover bands and tribute bands, and like that's what pays the bills, you know. Yeah, and they're paying them out yeah. hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So I mean, it's it makes more sense to be in one of those bands. Well, for maybe maybe we just don't have very good taste in Houston for music. <laughs> yeah. Easy. So 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 wait. I don't so know. Wait, I don't know. So wait. Why <laughs> why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? <laughs> no. I mean, it's like a hole for the people that live here. I don't know. I just, they don't just don't go out. Like they don't go out to shows. Like you're an hour hour from anything here. Like it it is the most spread out city ever. Like there's like, you know, Austin, you have six streets. So like Jenny said, you can hop bar to bar to bar and hear a million amazing bands. Yeah. You know, in Dallas, you have Deep Ellum. You know, the there's bar to bar. Part. You've got all those all those rad venues right next to each other. You can go mm-hmm. next door. And I mean, it was that way once here in the yeah. 90s. In the 90s, for sure. Yeah. Um, like, and then something happened. I don't know what, yeah. I don't know what it was, but in the 90s, you could, you could go to a, a venue like Fitzgerald's and, you know, uh, Jimmy World and at the drive-in are playing upstairs and, and cannibal yeah. corpse downstairs and then you know like it's just it was just and it's just different yeah, yeah was, and a lot was, of the a lot yeah. of those old venues are gone now like yeah. Fitz, gone. fitzgerald's is torn down it's a like parking lot now where it's you know yeah. some little i mean it's a lot of the areas where the cool venues that played a lot of original music that the neighborhoods gentrified turned over and the venues got torn down or closed yeah. Yeah. So it, it's especially tough now. Um, like I said, there was a there was a time in the '90s when when Houston was the spot, you know, for sure. for, for like uh, just that uh, post punk, uh, you know, not the what you typical think 
typically think of when you think of emo, but like legitimate, like yeah. bands from that era, you know, that are just, I mean, there was, there was some of the best stuff coming out of here that I'd ever heard. Uh, there was, a, a Sam's in another band called Omatai and his bass player, Melissa, she played every band she was in, in the nineties was the best thing I ever heard. <laughs> you know, like I'm not even joking. Like there was just so much of it. And there was a little collective here called hands up and they made it, they made it happen. But since, oh, very cool. since, uh, since hands up, uh, you know, they all grew up. We're all in our, you know, forties, you yeah. know, and uh, you know, oh, like you. <laughs> and they went and did their own thing and there hasn't, there has no, no one's done it yeah. since. I will say there are starting to be some new venues opening up and putting yeah. on shows. True, we, were, true. we were just talking about that. Like, cause we're seeing, some of our friends uh bands playing shows at places we've like what the hell is that and <laughs> you look it up and it's it's like it's just a new venue so it seems like stuff started to die and then yeah. uh the quarantine lockdown killed off a lot of things that were on their last legs but now stuff's starting to come back and yeah and hopefully the starts hopeful yeah hopefully the growth from from everything that's happened you know post uh, post lockdown era, hopefully, um, it, we get to, I'm telling you, there's, there's more talent here than anywhere I've ever seen. I've lived everywhere around the country and it's just, it blows my mind that, uh, we just get looked over. I mean, even for when we want to see bands come through or bands that are on tour, Houston is it's, only, yeah. It, yeah. they usually don't come here. They mm -hmm. usually, um, you know, especially if they're not doing a very, a lengthy tour, you know, like, you know, 60 days out or something, or yeah. even more, you know, uh, if they're not doing, if they're only doing three, four weeks, they're skipping Houston. And, yeah. and, and it's just hard to get, it doesn't matter how big you are. It, it's hard to get people to come out. I mean, I'm, I've seen bands that draw thousands draw, you know, less than a hundred people in Houston. So I get it. I don't, I don't know. You know, it's, it's wild. Yeah. No, no, yeah, I, I totally agree. It, it felt like the same way when I was in Phoenix. Like <laughs> right. people would just they would pass Phoenix all the time. Right. They would go to they would go to Vegas, they would go to LA, they would go, you know, and mm -hmm. then they would go straight from Vegas to, uh, to like Colorado. And they would right. just forget, yeah. and they were and, and they would forget about us. Like I was yeah. like, wait, no. hey, there's five million <laughs> people here. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Cool. I, I got a couple more questions and then I'll let you go uh for sure. Uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think your daughter just kind of ran. <laughs> <laughs> um, it happens. <laughs> it's all, it's all cool. It's all cool. I hear doorknobs rattling around. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, a a absolutely cool. Uh, so, the one question I wanted to ask is because there's been so much time between the record being recorded and it actually coming out, and I want it from all three of you. So, give me feedback. What would you do different in 2022 versus 2018 and 2019 uh, for Light as a Barrier? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely. I am so proud of this record. Yeah. It is not, it is, for me personally, I, I have a very DIY punk nature. I've always wanted to do, I've always appreciated, um, things that you know aren't necessarily super refined and i couldn't have asked for like all my little boxes to get ticked anymore on this record because i just i love things that are are personal i love things that uh you can hear that it's personal mm -hmm. um i believe and i love the little nuances like uh I'll miss a note and then I'll, I'll hate it for a year. And then, then I can't live without it type stuff. I love that, yeah. you know? And, uh, and, and one of my favorite parts of the record is if you listen till the very end, everything's quiet. The, 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 uh, symbols kind of go mm -hmm. out and you hear Steve just throw his sticks at his yeah. drum set. I love that <laughs> shit. You know, like yeah. I love everything about it. I, and done. And like in, in, uh, one thing that I have to say is I've done this since I was 16. You know, uh, I signed my first record deal probably when I was like 18 or 19. Um, I can't really remember what year it was because I'm old. But uh, 
being in a band has never been easier than playing with these guys. There's, yeah. there's never issues. There's never drama. And if there is any sort of tension, we make one of the best songs we ever write out of it, you know, yeah. all the time. I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, we, we really rely on staying grateful that we're even able to do this, you know, um, at this stage in our lives. Yeah. You know? Well, for me, like, like he says, I wouldn't change anything. I've, I've recorded, uh, not as much as Jay, but, and every recording experience, it's, you know, based is bass is dead last. Um, you know, the engineer's like, this is how we're going to do it. Period. You get no input on what you're using, how you're getting recorded. You know, it's, you know, you're going to punch in or re-record as many as times as you need to, to get it absolutely a hundred percent perfect. And then with this record doing it live, it was just did it. Every song was like maybe two takes. Mm. And then like I punched in one bass part. Um, and it was like basically a part where it's just me with some chorus. Uh, there was just wasn't quite right. But and we just let it be organic and live with it, man. And it made it such a better experience like having the family up there and the kids running around relax like yeah. record get something to eat have you know drinks it's just so much better and just having an engineer that'll go with the madness that i wanted to do uh, as far as recording because i wanted to mic my cab and then i wanted to try two different di signals and just kind of you know, record it all at once and then kind of mix or take stuff out, whatever sounded the best. And I think it led to the bass, the best that I've ever sounded on a recording. Yeah, we're, we're lucky to have Chris. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be sad if he ever quits engineering because he's our dude. We use him for everything. Sam's used him for everything he's ever done. He's just, He's a uh, kind of like that dude, our our Nigel Goodrich, like Radiohead's producer or whatever. Yeah. He's our Nigel, man. You know, so. and he's very uh, very stoic. You'll be like, "What do you think of that, man?" He's like, mm, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're like, should we do I another? Like <laughs> should we do another? Mm, you might have a better one in you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very cool. Um. Jenny, anything to add to that? or? Yeah, I just want to sing. So if we could just do this again and not have a pandemic, <laughs> that would be really amazing because uh, I, I don't get to go to practice much. You know, I kind of just, um, I write in my car. They they play it and record it and I write lyrics and melodies in the car and not write it, but in my head, you know, obviously I can't write and drive. But um, I, I just want to play a show. Like I'm ready to get on stage again. It's It's kind of like just an escape for me for sure i mean i come from musical uh, theater background and choir and i just i love being on stage i love performing and it's it's just it's so much fun and i if we could change anything i'd say scratch the pandemic and let's go <laughs> fucking play some shows nice <laughs> um so yeah Thank you very much for this. And like I said, like this means the world to me when I get to talk to bands just about music and things. And uh, uh, Jason, uh, I, um, I think we live very similar lives. I signed my first record deal at 19. I'm 49 years old. I, I feel like, you know, yeah, you, and, you and I have had, yeah, you and I have had these ups and downs. Like, yeah. you know, oh, I'm there. I'm there. No, yeah, roller coaster yeah. right back down. Like, <laughs> Uh, yeah. George, you feel you feel like you, you're kind of lived in the same world as well, too, where like you do music because you love it, not because yeah. you have to. Right, yeah. right. No, none of us are trying to run away with the circus. <laughs> we just <laughs> e everything we're doing is for us. It's entirely kind of selfish. It's, you know, we all kind of have that thing like this is totally self-fulfillment. We say loud therapy a lot, you know, yeah. but, you know, all of us have that background feeling that. You know, there have been so many moments in our lives where music helped us. Mm -hmm. it, it saved us. It got us through something. And if we can do what we love and what brings us fulfillment and it does that for even a single person, it's all worth it, man. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, the, the response from this has been 
overwhelming. Like I, I really can't believe it. Cause we're just, honestly, we're just a group of friends that love playing music with each other. There's no expectations. We don't go in trying to sound like anything. We just go in and we play what's in our hearts and what comes out, comes out, you know? And I, I just, it just, I feel like the universe put us together for a reason, you know? And like George said, if, if one person likes it, fine, we love it, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's what yeah. matters to us, you know? So awesome. I, I, I do appreciate though. Yeah. yeah thank you, very thank much. you for having us. A support. Oh, no, 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 support. No, no, you don't understand how good your, <laughs> your, your record is and how nice it is to do this. Um, I will end with that. If people don't like uh, buy light as a barrier, th- they're fucking stupid. They're not <laughs> stupid. They're oh, fucking thanks. stupid because this is <laughs> probably one of the albums of 2022 that have touched me the most. So like, awesome. uh, thank you. I'm uh, glad. So, yeah. So like, guys, if you ever come to the Orlando, Florida area, I will be there. I will hang out. We will. Hey, we're going a, soon. We'll, we'll, be <laughs> yeah. there in a, we'll be there in a month and a half. For well, Disney. let me know. For Disney. <laughs> I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Well, th- we, we live 30 minutes from there. We can hang out. That's not <laughs> a problem at all. Yeah. I think the first day we're, we're there, we're, we have some time to kill. So I definitely let me know. Yeah. yeah let definitely. me know. We'll, we'll, we'll go, we'll go have some dinner, uh, lunch, whatever. Yeah, right absolutely, on. man. But other than that, Clint from the Doorway 2, uh, hanging out with one of the coolest bands interviews I've had in quite some time. So I, I really do appreciate all three of you doing this. I will make sure that people uh, can find out how to get the record, how they can support you, how they can contact you. But again, man, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much. Thank no, you. no, I want to add that what you're doing, and we all collectively agreed that what you're doing, there needs to be more of. We really Thank appreciate you. what you're cool. doing. Yeah. It's so much cooler to see what you're doing as opposed to reading a review, in my opinion. Yeah, I, 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 sure. pre- I appreciate all the written reviews. I don't want that to be taken away from that, but I just really wanted to express how much we appreciate and believe in what you're doing. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Again, thank, thank you so much, yeah. and you guys have a rest of a good Sunday. <laughs> Thanks, you. brother. You as well. Bye. Bye.